set. Okay. Um, could, could you give us uh, an update on the Trades and Services Agreement, where, where that's at? The, tr the trade in the TISA, T the trade TISA, in yep. services yep. agreement negotiations. Yep. Certainly, um, those negotiations are, as you know, on ongoing. Uh, there's a stock take being held in July of negotiations, being led by Australia, EU, and US. Uh, so those negotiations are are ongoing. How long have they been going on for? Uh, I have to look when they started. Early 2012, they started. Early 2012, okay. Uh, have you, have you or uh, someone else in your department seen a copy of a leaked document from WikiLeaks, released 3rd of June 2015, in relation, uh, to, in relation to TISA, Trades and Services Agreement? Yes, we are aware of though that purported uh, leaked text, yes. Okay. Um, would it be fair to say that this TISA is a, is, a, is, a, is a deregulation agreement or a deregulation agenda across services? No, we don't see it in those terms at all. Okay. It says on the front of the WikiLeaks document, the agreement creates an international legal re regime which aims to deregulate and privatise the supply of services. That's that's the that's on the official documents. You don't agree that it's a deregulation agenda. Uh, it's, no, it's not a deregulation and privatisation agenda. Why, why would it say that on the the leaked document? You have you seen it? Can you say whether it's a valid a valid document? Uh, I'm not going to comment on the validity of the document. I can say from an Australian government point of view. Um, we don't see the trade in services agreement negotiations as a deregulation or privatisation agenda. It's a, um, it's a fairly standard trade in services negotiation where uh, the objective is to facilitate uh, international trade in services. Hmm. So it's fairly standard as in it's based on previous agreements? What, why aren't these well, not based on previous agreements, but standard in the sense that the objective is to uh, allow international trade in services uh, mm. to be underpinned by certainty of access and predictability of operating regimes for international trade. Uh, so, you know, normal in that sense. And what would achieve that certainty? Changing rules and regulations. No, not change of rules or regulations, but international commitments uh, that governments make to say that uh, foreign providers of services uh, will be allowed to operate uh, under the same domestic settings, rules, uh, regulations, requirements as, as domestic, uh, except where otherwise specified for particular purposes. Same. So no one will be required to change their domestic rules and regulations around the provision of services? Well, uh, you know, international negotiations, countries have to agree to, to do anything. So you can't be required to do anything okay. that you don't if you agree sign to, on to do. The, if you sign on to the agreement, then you would, you would possibly be signing on to changing some rules and regulations? Well, not necessarily. Um, not necessarily, but for possibly. For example, the recent, uh, the free trade agreements in North Asia that contain a very substantial services commitments haven't required Australia to change any of our regulatory settings. So we would <coughs> negotiate uh, TISA in the same context. Okay, I'll give you a couple of examples that are in the, in the, leak, the leak document. Uh, one relates to um, competitive delivery services on, on postal. Um, there's a section in here on cross-subsidisation. 
where it says uh, essentially, uh, give you, to give you a couple of examples, uh, no party may allow a supplier of services covered by a postal monopoly to cross subsidise its own or any other supplier's competitive delivery services with revenues derived from monopoly postal services. And it gives give some examples. Um, Australia Post is, is a business that currently uses, has monopoly services in certain areas and does use those revenues to compete in parcel delivery, which is competitive, uh, financial services, which is competitive. Um, if this is an example, how can we, if we don't sign up, if we sign up to this agreement the way I see it on this leaked document, uh, we'll have to change the rules around Australia Post. Well, a few things. Um, first yeah. of all, of course, we not going to comment on purported leaked draft texts. Well, this is um, the problem with secrecy, isn't it? But in terms of the content this, of your... The this is the problem with secret agreements. Uh, it's not... The, the content... Uh, the policy issues aren't secret. The draft negotiating texts are draft and confidential for a reason, but the, the policy issues aren't secret. They're very, very widely debated. So on the content of your, your question about would we be, be required to do anything uh, different to what we currently do on postal services, um, the way that these negotiations work is that, you know, basic rules are negotiated and agreed and countries uh, make sure through um, reservations, non-conforming measures, through, you know, various means in these legal texts uh, that they accommodate any particular national institutions, policies, practices that they um, want to ensure can continue okay. uh, if there's doubt that they would be contrary to the negotiated rules. And, and who makes so that, just and to sort of reiterate, there's no secrecy about the content and that the policy issues at stake in these negotiations. But on the other hand, draft positioning negotiating texts that might, you know, that appear at any point in, in the life of a negotiation are kept confidential amongst negotiating parties by tradition. So who, but who, who, make the, who makes those decisions about the, the inclusions, the carve-outs, all these kind of things? <coughs> Uh, the, the government parties negotiate them, so the... the yep, so the, the executive does in this country or, or someone well, in, DFAT does? in Australia, the constitutional responsibility mm -hmm. for treaty making does reside with the executive. That's correct. Mm, OK. And another example um, in the... Um, just the, sec the second annex uh, relating to financial services. There's a section on in, in here on foreign capital limitations. And it says, no party may, with respect to entities supplying professional services through a commercial presence, limit the participation of foreign capital in terms of maximum percentage limit on foreign shareholding or the total value of individual or aggregate foreign investment. Now, this is being proposed by the US. We have a four-pillar policy in this country around domestic banks. How can we sign on to this agreement and maintain our four, pillar, our four pillars policy? Well, once again, proposals do not an agreement make. Um, countries make all sorts of proposals in the context of negotiations. Sometimes they meet with support from negotiating partners, sometimes they don't. Okay. Uh, Australia has made many uh, commitments in its existing trade agreements on financial services, and of course they've been consistent with our, our regulatory settings. Okay. Uh, look, it does say on this, you've, you've got a copy of the document, it does say that Australia is one of many countries that's proposing this on this document. So whether that's true or not, none of us know, because it's a leaked document, we don't know how old it is, but that's actually what it says. And some other countries are considering it. Now, you said earlier we're taking a leadership role in this agreement. Um, it would be really, really important to have a national discussion around something like the Four Pillars policy, rather than uh, have secrecy around. So we, we can debate, Sorry, words. We can debate words about content. We're not negotiating about the four pillars policy in, in any trade agreement. All right. But it would be a disclosure at least if, you, if the government was to come out and say we're involved in this potentially transformational trades and services agreement and we will be on the table our issues such as removing our four pillars policy. 
mean, that, would that be a more honest appraisal? Well, if, if the government was contemplating that, of such all. order of magnitude, I'm sure there would be discussion about it. Um, what I'm saying about the trade in services negotiation is that it's a standard uh, trade in services negotiation and like the agreements that we've concluded uh, will be cons will be done uh, consistently with our existing regulatory mm. settings. 